but just for a start, um, we, we put this on the program, the, the issue of multidisciplinary research and talking about the opportunities and the difficulties. And we will deal with both of them during the discussion. Um, but if you look at nutrition, genetics, reproduction, physiology, health, and we as a scientific community or as a community at large, we go to a farm and say we have difficulties to, to, to make it really multidisciplinary. I think he would start to laugh because he's doing it on an everyday basis. He's dealing with reproduction, he's dealing with genetics, he's dealing with nutrition, and in the evening he's doing his finance and he's doing the economics. So, so why do we as a community have so much difficulties to make it multidisciplinary, whereas on the field it's a day-to-day -day business? Who wants to respond? Marianne. Well, I'm, I'm not sure of my answer, but as I said, to be able to make proof and facts in terms of science. So the, the instrumentation we need implies reduction. S that's the way we built our discipline. So, and more we know, more we reduce, actually. So we are not s in a systemic uh, approach. And I think most of the farmers have this systemic approach and accept some indicators, which we don't find um, enough precise, I would say, but which for them is enough for conducting the process. So we are trying to understand things, but they also want to manage things. And it's different. You don't have the same way to approach world if you want to manage something or if you want to understand it in depth. Sometimes you need to understand in, or in order to manage, but not, uh, not always. I don't think I understand how my motor is working, but I still manage to conduct my vehicle. So. Yeah, I wanted to add something else. Um, farmers do a lot of uh, multidisciplinary tasks, but often also they, they work within a community as we do. And, and generally they exchange within their own community, so within their own world views. And this is what we have also. We worked um, as geneticists, uh, immunologists, epidemiologists. We all have some kind of joint enterprise uh, and common language and a repertoire. And, um, and this, this is actually, this creates boundaries. <coughs> And, but they are flexible, so, sorry. <coughs> so, yeah, um, I, think, I think we are all in the same boat. So farmers are doing, actually having the same struggle as we have. And when you look at veterinarians, farmers kind of relationship, you can see that the borders are, you can shape them, you can move them, you can block them as we will do. So it, it, it's, not, it's not that they are doing the best and, and we are lacking. I think we are all struggling because I think it's part of our way of being as humans. We are quite, <laughs> we are quite in our way of seeing things um, and, and we have difficulties of compromising perhaps and trying to also <coughs> lift the head because sometimes we have many pressures, like farmers do, with the work we are doing. And, and this perhaps is the things to do, to think it, would, it, it is time gaining than to lose a bit time now to try to discuss together, to plan a bit better the future. It's not, it's not lost time. It, it is going to, this is probably going to be a real challenge because our capacity to observe in, in all the areas of biology is, is massively increasing. So the fragmentation that you indicated, I mean, we, we will probably go more and more for smaller fragments. <coughs> how, how do we go back to solutions? Uh, to uh, reach the crisis point where we will see, because we always work with crisis. There is a big crisis and then the thing that we really need to change. Um, but I think I won't monopolize <laughs> the board. But I think I think we can do the 
the fact that we believe in it, we can do it. It's just to think that ah, it will be with a lot of sweat and uh, energy, and um, but but it will be very rich. And this is how we might change some things because the world is running so fast. Uh, yes, from this, uh, I would say. Uh, from the scientist part. You see, uh, what what we want, we want to be competent, we want not to dilute too much the questions, so that is an issue to find the good balance between uh, the reduction, you mean, and the very complex questions we want to address. And um, uh, when I discuss with the students or PhD uh, doctorates or, uh, or candidates, they are afraid of uh, not being very competent if they combine too many disciplines. So we, I think our responsibility is to make them confident that even if they share their uh, uh, expertise in various disciplines, the added value of this combination will help to, 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 to do a better job. But there is a kind of fear of that. So w w I think we have to train the, the, the young scientists to be confident in this type of working and uh, it, it's it's not it's not so easy and the initial background during the phd is a major time and a major way of starting the scientific career so really i think it's our responsibility to set up programs where they have where they have the possibility to be very competent by combining disciplines and i'm not sure that all universities all around the world work the same way in this trans transdisciplinarity. In France, it's not very well done. In Spain, I think it's much, much better done. So w we have to also to, to, um, to pay attention to how students are trained in various countries, because sometimes these boundaries are felt very differently. A any reaction? Yes. Hello, uh, I'm Frederick Lambro. Uh, thanks a lot for this very interesting session on this very relevant topic. Uh, I myself, I did a PhD on a very clear cut practical uh, problem in intensive pig production in Flanders, and we tried to uh, set some initial steps on multidisciplinary approaches. And yeah, as an, as an animal scientist with a bit of interest in economics, so not the sociology kind of, of things. Um, it's very hard to get into those basics, and when, when you grasp the basics, you get the feeling we can never be right or wrong. Everybody is wrong and everybody is right, so we cannot be normative anymore. But then how will we proceed, and do we then also in training of students and, 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 and senior scientists need psychological assistance to learn how to deal with this, this, yeah, this issue that's in, in your mind? Um, that's one thing that I would like your insight. Don't you have <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I would like to make a comment, but uh, not uh, directly uh, answer to, to, to f f Friedrich. Uh, um, well, f for some diseases or some issues, I think a uh, multidisciplinary uh, approach is necessary, is, is required, um, because uh, as a single group or person, you do not have the knowledge in all these areas to, to, to tackle the problem uh, good. Uh, for some, items uh, it uh, may not be possible or, or uh, warranted at the first stage to, to see it at the population level and first you need to start with a simple model and then try to to see whether the results are there and then see whether you can apply it uh, at the more uh, population uh, level so that's always the, the tricky thing eh? if you d for a, if, uh, just an example if you do not know whether vaccine will work well you don't test it in a large group of animals but first you start in, in a small experiment and if it works then you go stepwise and, and try to extrapolate it for some other conditions well you just observe what you see in the field and you uh, let us say can generate some hypothesis in that way and then from that you can test some of the most interesting hypothesis in, in a more clear-cut way so you can work in both di both directions depending on on the on the, the condition or the problem but my comment that I wanted to make is uh, uh, yeah, on, on uh, you made that the statement that the farmer is every day busy with multidisciplinary uh, approach. This is true. 
Um, but um, coming regularly on, on pig farms, I also have the impression that for some issues there is still blindness. Eh? These are professional farmers, but sometimes it's really necessary that someone from external comes there and open the eyes eh, for a condition that uh, yeah, may be improved. Eh? Uh, and in pig farms, it's currently the issue of optimizing production health uh, and, and things like that. It's not only the production as such, but we try to optimize it. And for that, it's very important that different professionals guide the, 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 the farmer to, to optimize that. And backwards for us, it's also important to get feedback, feedback from the farmer. Is it really practical, possible to implement uh, what we recommend and uh, what is the cost of it and, and uh, uh, things like that. So from that point of view, I always find it very enrichment, enriching if you can uh, come on a farm and you have a nutritionist, someone who is specialized in the climate, we are more specialized in, in health, uh, to, to discuss uh, an issue and try to solve so that the farmer is not guided by that person in this direction, by another person in another direction. So that's and he, he has to make the decision. Uh, yeah. On your declaration, that the first step for one month, every day of the country was to react. Yeah, we'll try to do things. But um, um, I think, well, I, I'm a bit, from my background, I, I really uh, was, was educated as a, uh, well, I did epidemiology, so statistical modeling, things that are quite, um, linear and, um, and and the more I applied them the more I could observe that there were always negotiations between scientists you know the people that do we put this number oh we should put this one oh, let's see how and and it started to to make make me wonder actually on on what rely all our recommendations and guidelines and I think one of the important things because the training we all have different backgrounds, but trained as an uh, anim animal doctor, we are trained as uh, people who need to have the answer in front of the client. And because otherwise we would lose face, perhaps. And I think one of the things would be perhaps to um, just admit that we all are limited and, and that, that we suggest something. Um, and, but we, we might discuss on farm and see that actually our history of, of the animal is lacking of some information and we implement it and then we, we, we come to a, a common decision. And it won't, it won't neglect the fact that we have knowledge that the farmer won't have, but also it will acknowledge that the farmer has knowledge that we don't have. So this would be, for me, I, I feel this is something that would really help students and also help their, their, um, their, their personal um, life also in a way that you, you, don't, you, you are not afraid, you don't feel losing face. It's very hard. Um, so, so I think this would help a lot. And, and then, on, again, I'm always very skeptical with this, you, you use the term blindness, which, which disturbed me a bit, because I think we are all blind in our way. Um, and, and I think perhaps sometimes, yes, they don't know things, but, but it's because they have other things in mind that are priorities for them. So their priorities might not be your priorities. Um, and, and because they have a business, to make a life, this is their life, and so they have a rhythm to, to continue. So they will treat in a way for some disease because it's convenient. So I think animal health scientists would really, really gain in, in incorporating the dynamics of the, of the systems uh, animals are living in, uh, understanding the social component, the economic component, and the health component. And, the and of course, this is very complex, but it can be uh, <coughs> reduced. In all stories are complex, but they still can be said in a way that is quite simple. Just to go on a bit further, it's about what I spoke this morning about being reflexive. It's, as you said, we are all normative, and 
farmers and we. <laughs> and we have all in mind some reduction that we do, but being conscious of these is the first step for me. And teaching the, the, uh, the students to do that is important for me. And for example, if you look at most of our papers, we start sustainability is a big issue, and then whoop, you will find the gene number X. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I try to teach my students that this is not the way to do things. So you don't have a big claim and then, then just say this will solve the problem. I remember, I don't know if you know Sonigo, who, who was uh, belonging to those who discovered the HIV uh, genome. And once they discovered the genome, they went in front of the whole journalist and they, they had to say, yes, we have the answer now. We know how to solve the problem, but they didn't. And they said at that time, because I didn't know what to say because we had not a solution. We just say, well, we somehow saw the face of it, but well, so they, they turned, you know, but he decided to really change his way to look at things because he said, no, it's not the way. So I think we have to teach people to be a bit more, um, a bit less saying we will answer the big issues. And it's not a problem. I mean, it's if, if we also need to understand Things, not only for solving problems, but also because this is a faculty we have as as human also to try to understand, but then be modest and not say that we will solve the problem of the humanity. Reaction. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think really that's a, that's a very important point, and um, my impression as a scientist is. The, the, the main barrier is due to the pressure that we get from the, the, the research, scientific research system, which is to publish. And when you submit a paper, well, that's how you get your lab, your money, etc. So that's uh, the, 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 the main pressure. And, and uh, whatever you submit as a paper, the referee will ask you for mechanisms for going to a specific and very precise results that you de yeah, that you dig really in depth, and and so uh, in order to, to circumvent this because that's the value right of your scientific work that you publish in that type of journals and with this type of results, then in, in order to counteract this, then the uh, there, there are many solutions, but uh, maybe there would be a res um, a journals that promote transdisciplinarity work uh, that uh, would help that situation. And mainly on top of that is grant agencies and how they make their program, incitative programs, to promote this. And, and from there, I think there could be solution for that. You, you need to make it possible with with means and, and recognition. And the main thing is also recognition, and that's the whole system. There are some journals, and even science can, many are, is, is a journal where you can publish multidisciplinary work. So you have the, the publication, and if you look at most of the projects now, I mean, the programs, the goal, they ask for multidisciplinarity. But then, it's the way it is assessed, which is a problem because when we assess it, we don't most of the time accept program program where risks are taken. So the problem is more risk taking and how we accept that there is uncertainty that we can't have it in a project where all you know the steps are defined and things are already like that. So it means that we might need an ongoing assessment during the project or whatever. I don't know. But what I, I remember the AEH and the ANIH in, in the US, they make a first connection of projects. And then they say, well, we put on the on the side all different projects. Now look 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 this project again and see the one who tickers. And then they fund some of these projects. So I, I find this is also one solution to do things. 
We don't have this in France, unfortunately. In Europe, I believe. <laughs> um, Mikael from Italy. And one question. You talked earlier about farmers. What about pushing information up? Not from the science, but down. Not from the science down, but from, from the farmers up. Be Okay, we have now uh, some generations of farmers, especially in the niche uh, bio sector, when where they invent a lot. Some of this has a scientific validity, and some some part of this not. But you don't see many of this stuff researched. How do we take care of this that we don't lose some methods, management, or feeding systems that they invented, and it stays in their system? You want to respond on this one? No, it's this question. <laughs> Who is answering his question? Well, uh, I guess there are some researchers doing that and looking at farmers' innovation and trying to assess them or to, to, to support farmers in, in spray, spraying them, I would say. Uh, this is a trend of research too, but it's inductive research and not deductive research. And I don't know how it is in other countries, but in France we are not trained for inductive processes. We are much more trained for deductive or hypothetical deductive processes. And it's not such an easy work to do inductive processes. So maybe with data, big data, things will change because they also need inductive processes. But for the time being, it's, it's quite an unusual thing. Um, I just wanted to add something also. Um, um, as Marianne said, there, there are a lot of work done uh, involving farmers uh, in research. Um, and in the animal health sciences, it's, it's much more recent that we started to do that. Um, and that we started to use qualitative approaches and more inductive approaches. But still, the way it is done is very instrumental. So generally, we say we do qualitative research, but we either do a closed-ended questionnaire or an internet survey with questions we decided, and then ask the farmer <coughs> to tick the box. Um, and in this way, the information can go up. So I think there is a real work to be done for us to acknowledge the value of qualitative approaches and understand what it really means and stop thinking that because it's not number, it's less uh, robust um, and stop thinking that also the way the design of qualitative research is made is not robust because generally from my poor experience because I, I um, Still doing it, I would do it on my life, but I'm, I'm, I'm very new in the field. I, I can see how much more transparent it is in social sciences sometimes than it is in, in quantitative sciences. But I, I think that also one answer, uh, it's not an answer, but an autocritic of, uh, of your question is that uh, what we don't do well at all is that often dur during a project we plan meetings that we are going to share the results with the, with the farmers, stakeholders and so on, but we don't make these, uh, these meetings before starting the project to go to the, the, the farmers and stakeholders and, and ask for, for, for what they have been doing already, not to reinvent the wheel, and from that uh, we could then write the, the pr proposal which is, and we don't do that before because we are just busy often too much within scientists and not outside of scientists to write a proposal and, and we make these meetings to go with farmers during the project whereas we, sh we should do it also before, much before in hand. So that's a, that's a, a mistake we, we do all and we always think, oh, next time I will do that and we, we don't do it because we are running out of time. And, and I think that's a, a, big, a big thing we don't do well. I, I just have one, sorry, I have one, one comment on this. Since we are looking first to see my, my field, we are looking for predictive markers, okay? So we, we want to know what is the portability of these predictive markers. So we want to know uh, what is happening in the true life. And you said that the farms are the true life. 
our experimental farms are intermediate full life because they are animals are produced like in would say full life, but the health status is very high in some of them. So even if we do not construct projects at the very beginning when we are looking for biomarkers with uh, producers, very quickly we need to go uh, and to include uh, farmers in order to diversify the environments, to test in uh, organic farms and to test also virus genetics. So I think that we have to diversify uh, the different farms where we want to test uh, the different biomarkers we, we are uh, uh, searching now and uh, that we can identify. And I, I think that even if it is not over at the very beginning, there is always a time to start this collaboration that will help to know how efficient we are with biomarkers. Because we are looking, we are moving forward in predictive biology for health protection, so we do that very well for genetics. But we can also have new new types of phenotypes that can predict uh, phenotypes over a lifetime, and then we need to have access to these true life farms. And I'm quite confident that if we work well, we can exchange on this during the frame of this. Uh, um, Complex issue to be addressed with health and farmers production. Question? I'd like to hook on on this point with my question. I fully agree on the last three speakers that, that for example, farmers, where there's more people outside us scientists, add their building blocks too. They're not just instruments to, to, to help us on our questions or to test our solutions, but that our solutions are, are built up from all kinds of, of, of entries next to the question the, the, the knowledge we deliver if we do all things good if we rephrase our the, the question yap raised um, then we have complex problems but we have disciplines that's in fact uh, we, we reduce etc about five years ago we had a few transdisciplinary projects evaluated and the, the advices we got were exactly the points that were raised by the panel uh, earlier this morning and the two main advices we received were one add boundary objects. I didn't understand what it was, but they were mentioned this morning uh, twice or three times also. And the second one was combine reflection and reduction, sorry, not reflection, reduction. Us animal scientists make the problem smaller to get our own solution and then publish it, but that is not always a solution to the problem. That's, that, that's our job. Okay, otherwise we can't publish it, generally. Add to that reduction at some construction, constructivist people. And we tested those two uh, advices together in a summer school with, with Lucille four years ago, with, with about 20 PhD students. We had them, we gave them complex problems. We tried them to have, to give them boundary objects. So something uh, you have in common, which you build from all sides, but you have to build something, not analyze something. And it worked in the groups that had someone who was able to step out of his discipline and said, okay, I'm not interested in my discipline, but in the solution we make together. So I think the, the, the first three speakers this morning gave an added by, by building blocks later on, uh, really help us in to see that we have to design, to design our projects more than from disciplines. And I'm very interested how Safir and, and uh, Fide Jean do this, be this because the, the presentations, all of them I saw from those two, two projects, are all building blocks and not the advices you gave in the earlier uh, of this session. So I'm much interested in that too from the panel. Reaction to the coordinators. Reaction from the coordinators. Reaction. Uh, yeah, I, I fully agree. I think that, that that's one of the challenges in these projects that you. you Reduce the problem to a number of small elements and you have to start building up. And um, for those of you who knew Lee Bolton, who was a modeler, um, he said that he was quite chemistry and worked on a lot of mathematics. In his early career, he did that. He, he, he reduced complex problems to, to smaller problems again. He realized in his career that he has to go back and one way of doing that is by using models, using integrative approaches, actually qualitative approaches to, to, to see the bigger context. In VG, we have a full work package on modeling. We have a full work package on 
um, looking at uh, the, the building blocks that you propose on feeds, on genetics, etc., to, to look, well, what is the feasibility of that? What's the environmental impact of that? What's the cost benefit of that? Of that. Working with stakeholders, because the stakeholders eventually are the ones who are going to use the building blocks or further develop the building blocks that we propose. And, and, and all these projects, Sapphire and FDG, they're not proposing full flex solutions. They are giving directions in where we can go. And that is also the reason that we do not have to stick just to this session after this morning, but also go this afternoon, because with stakeholders, they, we have to discuss them how we can pick up the building blocks that we make. We're not going to build, build, make, uh, make a, a house. Huh? We make perhaps a plan. Huh? But it has to be developed further by, by, by different stakeholders. So, so modeling is one tool, but the direct interaction, and I think one word, we've talked a lot about multidisciplinary research. What we haven't talked about much is multi-actor approach. Uh, Fidegin is a multi-actor approach. So here, not by name, but I think by, by, by my construction, to some extent it is, there are different actors involved. And that's absolutely the way Europe wants to go. So they want to go where people, not just from different disciplines, but also different stakeholders, different people who have, a, have, a, have, an, have an impact and have a, what is it, how do you say, a, have a role, have something to say about the, the issue that we're dealing with, are directly involved, not just in applying it, but in the very construction of the problem in the definition of the problem in the definition of the boundaries. So that's my response. I don't know if the coordinator of, of uh, Sapphire. No? Can just make a comment? Sure, yeah, then they open. Yeah. I, I fully agree with, with uh, your views and also the, the comments uh, that were raised. Um, but on the other hand, I think in the past we have also been successful for some diseases, for instance, or just disease, we had eradicated large part uh, of, of the world, uh, cowpox, uh, other diseases, um, yeah, we were successful and maybe it could have been faster or more efficient, but the virologists, the immunologists, and finally also the epidemiologists uh, uh, showed that uh, although we did not have a, a perfect vaccine for a Jeske disease at the population level, we could reduce the transmission under a certain threshold and we could, could eradicate it. But it's not always easy, and I fully agree with the statement of, of Isabel that uh, there is a pressure to publish. And if you have a good experiment, a good aim that has been practical relevance, but your results are not what is expected, it's not easy to publish. So if you would have a journal of negative results, it would be a very thick one, but it's, it's not easy to, to get it published. So from that point of view, uh, indeed, we should not overemphasize what we have found. But on the other hand, maybe we need five failed PhD students in order, or PhD projects or outcomes in order to end up with a successful one and to make one step of progress in, 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 in uh, elucidating a control measure for, for, for a disease, for instance, or another aspect. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Jaap. Yeah, I think. We need uh, in-depth research, of course, disciplinary, but also the integrated research. And what I was already stated, it's important. I think you said it in the beginning, think about communication. You see now when universities are judged or research institutes, they look at scientific quality and at social impact. And that means also the multi-actor approach, stakeholder approach, if you have in feed the gene. I like that very much, because if you see if production is increasing, it's not only nutritional breeding. Breeding, nutrition, health all together. But then other aspects we have to deal with, and more and more in the coming decades, is the public opinion. And I think that's really what we're facing, and that's where independent, objective research is extremely important. I see it in the Netherlands, country where I'm from. We have in the parliament now five people from the 150 who is the party of the animals. That's just one issue, just animals. And more or less, they are very critical about animal production, intensive animal production, and use a lot of arguments. Eh, we have to uh, to get rid of pig or poultry production, or just extensive, only outdoor, and those kinds of discussions are coming. And therefore, it is important that the people in research can say, hey, this is uh, really facts, this is how it is. Also, the new technologies coming. There are coming a lot of new technologies. If we look back, we have a huge discussion in the EU on GMO. You see CRISPR-Cas, which was in the Parliament, a discussion a few months ago with opinions. 
where some researchers said, yeah, wh what is deciding? And I think we did not a good job in communication as scientists what it means. So a lot of people don't trust new technologies. And that's where we have to stand up and say, hey, this is, this is facts and this is not facts. And, and that's also we're asking the panel, how can we do maybe a better job of be prepared for the future where we get more and more discussions? I see it also if we apply for animal experiments. You have an animal ethical committee. In a lot of experiments, the first question is, is this only to improve uh, or to increase average daily gain or production? Then we should not do it. You see, that's the perception in the minds of a lot of people. Yeah. And, and we have to respond, I think, as scientists and international. Some countries, it's stronger as another, but for sure it will be a discussion point for the coming uh, decade. <coughs> I think I, I disagree with you, I'm sorry about that, but because I think we all have value in our things. And when we say that um, we are objective as science, we are not. I don't agree on that. So we try, and that's what makes a difference. We try to develop instrumentation in order to be the most objective we can. But we have to recognize that we already have made some choices because we prefer intensive production maybe instead of other. So so we, we don't have more impo importance in, decision, in political decision making than other people. And so we are, don't have the truth. We just have the more maybe uh, you know way to instrument our demonstration. So my my view is that we need to always balance, that's why I say we need to balance between robustness and social relevance, because we are always struggling in between these things, and we have to recognize that social relevance at one moment is maybe not the one later on, and because pe people's opinions change and so on. So that was my answer to you. Just wanted to add, um, uh, on my own comments, on the fact that we, uh, as scientists, we always base our observational tools and also design that we, we formulate. Um, and, and the tool has got their limitations. Um, I, I, I worked on the helmets in, in, in cattle, um, the study aid to see the production effect. Um, of a helmet infection. Um, my indicator was serology, milk, um, and, and obviously trying to see associations between volume of milk and, uh, and uh, titers of antibodies. And you can obviously uh, recognize that you can take the thing in two ways. So the, the, you might have high title of serum. Um, and, and low production of milk, it might be related to production impact, but it might be related to division effect. And generally we, we frame it, oh, it's, it's a production effect because this suits us a bit more. So I think the first, the first thing would be to acknowledge our limitation, and I would, I would add that negative uh, results in this case are also very important to show and are very important to, to, to publish. Um, in this actual study, I struggled, and, and the reviewer said, "Well, there is. What are you showing? Because you are not showing anything." No, the point is to say, well, actually, the tools I used was, uh, well, the design was the most I could do, really, uh, taking the most accurate data, uh, uh, recording, going to farm every week. I couldn't do anything more. But then, even though my results were debatable. And I think this was related to my tool, my indicator, and all the indicators that actually in the almond field, people are using to just prove there is an impact of almond, so we need more um, intervention. Um, so, so yeah, I would say acknowledge our limitations and publish negative results are critical. Question? 
Uh, yes, I had uh, well, one question and one comment. One question is about the multi-actor involvement. I am surprised that the participatory sciences have not been uh, spoken about yet, because it's exactly the answer to this concern of involving the stakeholders from the beginning and not only to asking them their needs, but it is another way to conduct research. So two years ago, there was a report published uh, in France uh, to set up the terms of reference of this way of doing science, and there are many options. There is not a perfect model of doing participatory science, but it is always taking more time than a classical project. And then maybe this could be a question for the EU Commission. Uh, do they ask or are they willing to support participatory science projects at a large scale uh, with the different assessment criteria? Because at the moment, at least in France, there are such projects like that. Uh, a few of them have been supported by the National Research Agency others by different sort of uh, either regional money or different solutions. And, uh, but uh, the interest is growing, at least at INRA. So there is this terms of reference. There has been uh, Ecole Chercheur, so, uh, so a one week uh, training uh, with the participants from NGOs and from different uh, research institutions. And uh, well, in eyes about 8,000 people altogether, and I think uh, in a survey there were two or 300 people answering that they are either starting or willing to explore the, this way of, of making uh, research. And, uh, but it needs to set up its uh, rules of quality to avoid uh, having just uh, discussing and nothing coming out. So this is my, my first, uh, well, I don't know whether some of the colleagues had an experiment or uh, had, have experimented the participatory science project. And regarding the other question of co general communication, at the moment what we are experimenting, but at the institutional level at INRA, is having um, general agreement with the uh, NGOs involved in environment, on, in environment protection. And typically we have this uh, uh, recent uh, agreement with the uh, France Nature Environnement, so France Nature Environment, uh, which has been publishing um, uh, newspaper pa uh, criticizing agriculture and agriculture research a lot. And so, but they are still interested in having this general agreement with INRA because uh, they finally told us uh, we have, um, I don't remember the word in English, but they have a political message they want to deliver. But they are concerned that this political message should not be completely opposite to current knowledge. So they are willing to have this general agreement with INRA so that they can organize some meetings with some experts that INRA will identify to check that what they are putting into their political message is not completely out of uh, objective, uh, as much objective it could be, evidence. And uh, so it's a tricky exercise because, uh, as has been said, we are never fully objective. But uh, when they agreed to sign this agreement with INRA in general, it was their main motivation. And for us, it was rather the motivation to set up joint research projects. So we had different uh, motivations, so we tried to set up in the agreement that we are also willing to work with them in order to identify research priorities uh, more fitting their concerns. And uh, they are expecting us to send experts in some uh, uh, group discussions so that they can elaborate uh, their uh, message. Okay, th thank you. Um, we are approaching, yeah, sorry, no, we, we are approaching the end. No, yeah, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not finishing yet, huh? We are approaching the end, and I think it, it's, it's nice. I would like to, I, I don't want you to leave with, with, with ne negative aspects. I think uh, it, we want to finish with opportunities. And you provide an opportunity, you, you said about teaching, uh, and perhaps also the, 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 the young scientists. I mean, we, we are asking them, in fact, to some extent, well, okay, I don't say we have messed up, huh? but um, we provide solutions, we should do it like this, and we should provide training. How, how, how do you feel about that? I mean, you're trained now, you are trained now, are you comfortable with that? Are you comfortable with what they say? Or, or Felix, or, or Matilda, do you want to respond? Are you comfortable with it? Yeah, thank you, Nia, for a very interesting uh, uh, discussion. Yeah, I, I completely agree with the, all of the comments. We, 
um, we cannot, um, like, like a farmer, they deal with um, multidisciplinary works every day, but they cannot solve the uh, problem with multiple uh, causes. And, and we also, we don't, solve, uh, we don't provide one solution, we just provide one aspect of the problem, and it has to be in, implemented in the, in the future. Okay? And uh, yeah, like one of the comments in the, uh, from the back, uh, we cannot uh, have the uh, how do I say um, expertise in all of the fields, and we don't expect students or even the senior scientists have the have the knowledge about everything, and uh, we have to collaborate with each other, <coughs> obviously. So, so like Marianne was uh, starting this talk, saying that. Uh, the disciplinary approach needed a, a trusting process. Are you trusting the process then? <laughs> Ma Marianne was uh, finishing her talk by saying that multidisciplinary approach needs uh, to trust the process rather more than trusting the people. So are you trusting uh, the process? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, and, your, and your neighbor too, <laughs> that she can answer. Yeah, um, yeah, we need on the, uh, the process and also the people. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you, you are very good in uh, diplomacy. <laughs> okay. I think I will answer my own point of view as a young scientist because I started my PhD almost two years ago now in a field I didn't know. I didn't know anything about microbiota at first. So I think if we want to involve our project in with many collaborators and like stakeholders and all the people, we first have to know what we are talking about. And that's the first point. But yeah, it's really interesting to work with others, like with the uh, yeah, putting companies in, in my case, because they can be interesting in a practical way uh, on my results. So that's really something we have to, to do with research is to yeah, involve our research results as a practical field. So I just have one, uh, I was want to add one comment. Um, uh, I, I think we cannot expect one scientist have the very broad knowledge about everything and if we involve too deeply in one aspect and we lose the other, it's obvious. Like for my own experiment, I did my bachelor in veterinary, and this morning I, I listened uh, to some uh, uh, presentation about vaccination, and it's already quite uh, new for me. And then, yeah, after a few years, just few years, involved more in animal production, and I already lose the background a little bit about veterinary. And I think, yeah, it, it's obvious that we have to uh, combine different projects together and learn from each other, and, and we cannot. Uh, yeah, one people can solve every problem. There's an opportunity, huh? Yeah, Candido Pomar from, uh, from Canada. I'm just uh, making a comment on you know, a question is, uh, until now, most of the innovation is coming from individuals. We have been trained to work individually with small groups, and we are producing that. That is solving some problems. But when the, the problems become more complex, we, we need the multidisciplinary approach. But more complex is the problem we have to solve. The largest has to be the, 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 the group. My, my question is, we are talking here mostly like if we are scientists, the responsible of leading these this multidisciplinary groups. My question is, I think when we reach some, some level of, of complexity, Maybe it's not scientists who that can be that should be driving or leading these groups. Maybe because we are no, we are needing the producers to maybe leading some of the problems. Maybe the society people from the society has to be part also part of these, these these groups. So I don't think that we have to be always the leaders on the on, on, on the those that are uh, generating all these. Uh, the solutions. Solutions, I think, sometimes will need to come from from other other groups that are going to lead uh, this. So the multidisciplinarity, I think, changes depends of the complexity. And higher we are, maybe 
we are just going to be one part, the scientists, and other part is going to be other part of the society. Yeah, still one. Um, actually, it's not a, not a question, maybe a concrete opportunity. Um, what I've learned from, from the past, and I'm happy to see this um, uh, conference, that uh, other uh, views on animal production, the future has been debated on, which is very positive. And uh, what I think about multidisciplinarity is it's the opportunity to learn from each other, not among researchers, but learn from people from NGOs, uh, learn from farmers, learn from everybody what, what they have as knowledge. But the first thing everybody then has to learn first is to be uh, a fair loser in, a, in its way or to, to learn how to be open-minded. And maybe a concrete opportunity for us scientists is at the next conference to have a workshop on um, attitude building or training to, to yeah, and, and getting an open mind for discussions. Okay, thank you. Anyone else final? I just would like, just to go back to the societal demand because our young researchers are in the society, so we need to be attractive also in our research uh, issues. And I think that um, we have to combine. Um, Producers, farmers, but also researchers and most importers that we all aim at um, changing methods, going for uh, agroecological transitions, and that we want to combine uh, different uh, breeding goals, different breeding uh, um, uh, aims, uh, and that we do not focus on the production, but we also focus on health, on welfare, and we don't want to optimize animals only for ourselves but also to optimize uh, the global ecosystem. And that is a very complex issue that is related to multidisciplinarity. But I think that we have to, to all together promote these new uh, breeding objectives that need to renew the way we ask questions and produce data and analyze the data. And if we agree on this, I think it is a step forward to uh, have this uh, new horizon <laughs> where we can build up I think we will not solve everything <laughs> today, but I think we, we heard that we need a critical mass and diverse mass of, of people to address issues. Issues are more and more complex. We heard from Marianne also that it's a process, so do we have the instruments to to, to address that, like uh, like we see that it's, if it's a process, that means that if we think uh, differently, on, on uh, there would be new questions during a project. So normally projects we are responding, like uh, Safir Fidogene, are fixed because they, we have got deliverables, we have got plants. And is it not uh, um, antinomic with, uh, uh, with, with, the, with transdisciplinary approach where we should uh, create new questions uh, and, and, and adapt. Are, are our projects flexible enough to uh, to change on the way the way we are thinking and to 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 let come new new air, new new brainstorming? I don't think so. But that means that we should have very complex uh, instruments, uh, project uh, more flexible, and and with the the compromise with also the the the, the, the requirements for 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 publication and and career assessment. So I, I think it's it's a it's a complex uh, and, and and one 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 uh, one solution doesn't fit uh, doesn't fit all uh, I believe. Project coordinators we can yeah. give to Europe you know, because we, we know the the benefits but also the, 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 the difficulties we have with that kind of approach to these complex problems. So I think that we should that we should, should take up. It's a quarter of well, twenty past noon. So um, it's not over yet. Uh, come back this afternoon at two because we will continue at two <coughs> discussing with stakeholders, discussing with these multidisciplinary approaches. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the speakers, the people that participated in the roundtable discussion very much for your participation. I would like to thank you also for your participation, and I hope to see you back in uh, an hour and a half or so. So have a good lunch. And see you